Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope from Hammock. HM207. I believe this one is the Dash 2 version from 1969. And it <laughs> is an old transistor oscilloscope. Well, they even call this an oscillograph. So it's all transistors. So that is a 21 transistors in total. Yeah, and of course the CRT, that counts as a tube. It is a little bit rusty crusty, so I think I should definitely open it and inspect it before we power it up. That is always what I recommend to do with old vintage equipment. First, I did a little inspection on all the knobs and everything seems to be moving with exactly the right kind of feelings and all that kind of stuff except for this one i can't move that one so there's definitely something broken i need to look a little bit uh, deeper into that but like i always say when it comes to really really old vintage stuff you get like this and it looks quite rusty and all that Please open it first, do a deep visual inspection and then carefully power it up because you can create much more damage uh, to stuff like that if it's already a little bit broken and you can see how rusty it is here and look at that. That scares me a lot because we probably got some capacitors in here, they leaked. And now we got a lot of rust here. And when I see stuff like this, yep, I just don't power it up before we have a little have a little look, yeah. Look at that. And it's working super, super smooth. I went through all the contacts and I mo moved all the knobs a little bit away. I mean, come on, guys. Is it difficult to avoid stuff like this? Yeah. I mean, you gotta be an absolute muppet to put all the knobs so that touches the front plate. I mean, really? So all of them, they more or less touch. I mean, they're supposed to be just a half a millimeter or a whole millimeter, just so you can stick in your nails. That's fine. But they're not supposed to touch and grind so yes i have to fix all that as well and this is not definitely not the first time i see this i, I think it is a thing people really thinks the knobs needs to go touch <laughs> oh crap but anyway this thing is so full of dust I have to go outside and give it some compressed air before we can go and um, power it up. I did check for leaked or blown or swollen capacitors. I only see this one got cracked isolation. So if it's not working, maybe this one could need a little bit of re placement we got really a lot of capacitors uh yeah we got three field effect transistors in this thing that one is one of them and i believe that one is the time base time base soft tooth oscillator using a field effect transistor and that will be the vertical input amplifier that is also two field effect transistors in sockets how nice and that will be vertical deflection and uh, I don't know if you can see this but those resistors uh, well well have been a little bit hot for a million hours yes I definitely need to go and uh, yeah I think this Dust is a little bit grown into the circuit boards. But I don't find anything that is uh, 
telling me not to power this up. Yeah, we got a little dead bug or some other funky bugs living here. This uh, screw is uh, not there, and I know exactly why. Because you will find it very, very hard or close to impossible to put the nut up here. Look at that. Easy access, not so easy access in here, right? So that's why they just thought, hmm, too much trouble, we just don't put it there, right? It's a beautiful single layer circuit board. Not the most advanced uh, when it comes to layout technique or anything like that, but it's a glass fiber board. And we've got trimmer capacitors over more or less each of the resistors in the voltage divider for the input attenuator here so you can tune this for maximum and there's a, a little thing about speed this one um, is supposed to have a 7 megahertz maximum vertical bandwidth but it can be as low as 1 megahertz depending on the settings where are you here so that is sort of how it can be with this um, scope by the way and it says, says 72, so this has something to do with the version and all that. So this one is from 72. I thought it was from 1969 because this one is the version 2. I can uh, easily recognize this by the round CRT shadow. So it's funny, it should be um, the dash 2, right? But... The circuit board says dash three and dash um, three models uh, got a square or rectangular um, CRT shadow. So that is a little bit of a bastard when it comes to version or they just use this um, new circuit board in an older model for the, for the front here. That is, um, yeah question mark so I really cleaned this up real nice and shiny on the inside using both a little bit of hot water cotton butts paper and a paintbrush and all that it is it had a thick layer of kind of dirt, dust, sticky, maybe it was left outside in the rain or something like that. So that will be the high voltage. And down here you can see the two red diodes for the high voltage. So this entire area here I really want to be have nice and clean. So there's no leakage and I've just been searching all over the place for anything that should prevent me from powering it up and I don't find anything so I think you can definitely see how much cleaning I did and that is really all there is to it 21 transistors ah, that is not a lot oh so how about it let's yeah that's the on off switch right Let's do it. And we got mains applied now, and we did not see anything bad going on. 40 watts, 30. And down to 26 watts. And I was hoping to see a little bit of green. But at least we don't see any 
flames or anything, but 21 watts is not enough to make it go. I don't see a beam, this is external. I try with everything in the middle here. Uh, that is a boring, boring video. Oh man, sucks. And this is one of those super, super happy moments. I don't know if you noticed the deflection resistors down here, how warm you can see the first one is. And then you just, you know, no, I'm not even inspecting the schematic. All I do is take my thermal camera and you can see the first one is very, very warm. And the inner one right there is ice cold. Ha ha. So we've got deflation problem. And that is why the beam is a million miles out to <laughs> one of the sides. And this is why we don't see anything happening. This is where we need to go and have a little look. Remember when I started this video, I said something about this one being the 207-2 and that is how you normally identify the revision 2 from the round shadow and version 3 normally got a rectangular shadow but there are obviously versions where this is mixed up so that is a little bit special so this is of course the dash 3 version and why is this so super crazy relevant now yes it is because i am trying to figure out what is wrong with the deflection like i said one of these resistors get red glowing hot all the voltage on the whole deflection a rail is over one of the resistors and the other one in here is ice cold. There's no current going in that um, resistor. So of course there's something wrong in the deflection system. And as you can see already, I put a little marker on that transistor here. And that is because I want to tell you how I figured out it was that one that is broken. So let's look a little bit on the two schematics. The version 2 schematic uses a few more transistors, as you can see uh, here in the middle. In the deflection circuit, we got two more um, of the small uh, BF uh, transistors. And in the dash 3 version, they're using only two sets of the small transistors. And uh, so, of course, I needed the correct schematic, so that is why it was relevant. So what I've done is I got the pin out for the transistor and this is how a BF311 looks like and it is an NPN transistor. So uh, if you look at the schematic it's quite obvious that all of them are NPN transistors and they of course follow a general rule that is the voltage on base is always 0.6 to 0.7 volts higher than the emitter. And the collector voltage is always higher than the emitter and base voltages. Uh, that could be quite a lot of volts depending on how the circuit is. But it is this base emitter voltage that's always positive. And of course we need to know that all those transistors, they are normally supposed to be biased correctly so that all of them are on and in a steady state, uh, stable uh, state, right? So all I did was to find out that I started with the burning hot transistor. First uh, idea was, okay, we could have a shorted transistor. So that means the collector emitter could be shorted and that could definitely also lead to this problem. But that transistor, the base emitter was drive driven completely on and that was done due to something previous so that transistor was okay the other one that is uh, off there is no base drive voltage on that one and uh, so i still believe that that transistor could be okay so then i went to the previous two driver transistors and on those everything is more or less legal within legal limits so i can't say 
uh, I mean, I cannot, cannot from the measurements prove that any of these are defective. Uh, they're just not, one is driven on and the other one is not driven, right? But here, the one that I have marked, I will show you the measurements. Let's see if I can do this uh, <laughs> like real school book kind of stylish here. So now the unit is turned on. Okay, so let's first see the collector voltage. So that is a positive 15. Emitter voltage is negative 0.6, but the base voltage is positive 0.6. So that means we got too much voltage over this one base emitter wise. So that is why I think that this one got in an open base emitter. How about we try and look at the one behind it? See the collector voltage on that one is only 1.6. The emitter voltage is 0.23. And then the base voltage is 0.5, right? So I think this one here is driven normally on. So this is quite all right because we got a within normal accepted base emitter voltages. And that explains that this one is driven completely on, but this one is driven completely off because there's too much base emitter voltage. And that is only possible if the transistor is broken. Then another problem, oh, let's me, let me quickly turn this off. Uh, another problem is that I don't really have any of these uh, BF311. And it is a very, very fast transistor. But for this circuit, I mean, really, is that necessary? Um, this is a 7 megahertz amplifier, really. So instead of putting in this one that I do not have, I'll just try for the experiment to put in a BC547 uh, because uh, the, those you already have right but look at that we have a little challenge with the pins so I need to swap base emitter when I try and put it into the circuit board and uh, I'll just first I will try to change only one of them and see if I get a beam within the screen I think we got a breakthrough Look at that. So this is uh, one kilohertz and here is my vertical position. So all that is fine. Horizontal is low in width, right? So there's something, but maybe somebody, pull, uh, this is X amplifying. So somebody probably just uh, dialed in that one. So I'm uh, of course going to uh, follow that, but everything else seems quite normal. What I have done is, if we look at the schematic for the deflection amplifier, you will see that the voltages on the two collectors is supposed to be 93 volts in the schematic. And if I measure here, it's 92. And if I go to the other one, it's 90. So it depends, of course, on how accurate uh, did I adjust the sensor position. The Supply voltage before the two power resistors, I measure 152. And if we look at the schematic, it says 152. So, I mean, I definitely have a vertical amplifier that is now good and nominal. And if this is not just the X uh, amplifier, let's try and dial here. Oh, that potentiometer. See? Oh, here is the problem. It just goes around and just before I had a tiny little glitch of contact. So it's a mechanical problem. I will just go and look at that uh, potentiometer. That, now we got horizontal deflection. So that potentiometer trimmer here, that was completely broken. And it was, uh, this is actually a little bit, I don't know if I can show you guys this, but it is a very special kind of uh, trimmer that is also for um, through hole mounting and all that kind of stuff. It's just it's not really a, what I have. And it is a 2 k a 2K2. So what I did is I disabled the wire that goes down to those two points and I just added 
a trimmer here. So now it is possible to adjust this and uh, I could carry on with my experiments. Now I wanted to see if I got vertical bandwidth within normal range. Let's try and measure the bandwidth. So what I've done is here is a 50 uh, ohm through load. So my generator is of course set for 50 ohm. So I know that I'm delivering a correct signal. Well, we just start with one kilohertz and uh, I've adjusted this for full 100%. Uh, so I know that minus 10 and 90, that will be the first little line here. And this is uh, my uh, minus 3 dB point that I'm trying to hunt down, right? So if this is one kilohertz, we just give it 10 kilohertz and then click, click. And then we can go, so that was 10 kilohertz, 50, 100 kilohertz. See the amplitude is still the same. You can of course do like that, like that if you want a nice beautiful picture. So that was 100 kilohertz. Let's just go to 500 and then one more click here. Beautiful. And one megahertz. Two, three, ooh, four. So minus 3 dB point is about four megahertz. We got a nice and uh, stable picture. Only if you poke this a little bit. I don't know how visible this is on the on the video here, but maybe you can see that the picture is a little bit dark here in the middle. There's, yeah. Can you can you see that now? And that is of course because the CRT. Uh, is very very old this is from 1974 so it's 50 years old right and of course uh, it was used mostly in the middle here right so i think that explains <laughs> the darker picture in the in the middle so there is only one little thing to say and that is uh thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon again.